All right, welcome you tens to this uh, first video in this particular topic. This topic um, is going to look at linear equations and linear graphing as well. Um, so in this video, what I'm going to do is look at uh, something that you would have started doing in year nine, which is the distance between two points or finding the distance between two points. Um, um, when I'm talking about two points, of course, I'm talking about two points that are on a Cartesian plane, um, which is drawn as shown. Um, I've just gone with the positive quadrant of the Cartesian plane. So you've got your y-axis and your x-axis. And I'm talking about two coordinates that lie somewhere on that particular plane. Now, what we tend to do is we, when we're not working with numbers, we'll use these, this particular notation, which is x1, y1. That's referring to your first coordinate. Here it's labeled A. And the second coordinate I've marked on here, I've called B. So I've called that x2, y2. Now that sort of notation you should be familiar with because it's what you would have used in the past. It's what you would have used when you were calculating the gradient as an example. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to find the distance between these two points here. I've just highlighted it there in green. So what we can do is we can think about this, well, logically, what can we do here to find the distance between these two? The best thing to do would be to create a little right angle triangle out of this situation. Uh, so there's your right angle in there. So I've done a horizontal line and a vertical line. And then of course the green bit that we're trying to find, that would be the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. And I'm going to call that AB. So the distance between point A and point B, we just list as AB. Okay, now in terms of the triangle, I said that's the hypotenuse. That means that any of these would be A and B. So we're using the notation that we would uh, come across in Pythagoras. We'd use lowercase a, b, and of course c over here. Just put that in brackets up there. The reason I'm doing this is I actually need to write a rule. I want to be able to write a rule that will allow me to find the distance between two points for any particular coordinates that I have on my Cartesian plane. Now, as you can see, I've got x1 is the x value of this coordinate. I'm just going to mark that on here. I might just use yellow. Uh, so this is x1. I'll just fix that because I haven't done a very good job of it. It's better. And of course, over here, this point, that's x2. I'm just going to jot that down just so it's clearer that I'm working with a distance here, distance between my x values. Over here, this point would be y1, so it's the y value for that particular coordinate. And if I do the same for the other coordinate, you'll see I've got y2. So whatever those numbers appear or actually are, I've, I'm not using the numbers, I'm using um, just some notation instead. So as you can see, if I wanted to write a rule for this uh, using my Pythagoras theorem, now, just try and fix this so it starts to work. Might just be a little bit slow. There we go. C squared is A squared plus B squared. Now, I didn't call it C. I called it AB. So, AB squared is the A squared plus the B squared. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm not going to be working with A's and B's here. I want to write down what the distance of those two actually is. So, if you have a look at this, I've got... This distance A is actually going to be x2 minus x1. So the difference between these two um, coordinates is going to give me that length. So really what I could write this as is AB. You can write A as x2 minus x1 all squared. That's my A value squared plus my B value is do the same with the y's. So the difference between those two points will give me this length here. So that's going to be all squared. I've left my little squared off there. So ab squared is equal to a squared plus the b squared. And now what I can do is I can say, well, ab, not ab squared, take the square root of both sides. And I'm left with this formula here. So I wanted to start off with that because that's where the formula actually comes from. Given a formula or finding a formula and using it, you do have an understanding of why. Why do we take the square root? Why is it x2 minus x1? Because that's going to help you solve some of the more challenging 
questions in terms of the distance between two points. So here's the formula down here that we are going to use uh, and I'll take you through a couple of I guess easy questions to begin with. Um, I say easy because it is basically just substituting into that formula that we have at the bottom there. And then I'll show you a more challenging one. Okay, so on to a nice straightforward one. We're finding the distance between two points A and B. So what I'm gonna do is I'm first going to say, oh, before I start, one thing that you can do, and one thing that you often see done, is that you'll first find AB. Um, if I just find, oh sorry, first find AB squared. If I just find AB squared, that's obviously going to be taking the, um, I'll just write my formula so that you can see what I'm talking about. If I do this first, it means that I don't have the big square root sign in all of my workings and I'll do the square root just at the end. Uh, so what I, what I need is my x2 minus x1. Now I don't know why, but my tablet is playing up a little bit, as you can see. So I can't write as quickly as I would like to. y2 minus y1 squared. And now we can substitute the points in. So that's a rule that I had um, on the slide before. Um, I just haven't taken it all the way through to square rooting to get AB. All right, so this one here, uh, x2 minus x1. So it doesn't matter which one is x2 and which one's x1, um, x1, by the way. It really doesn't matter. You'll get the same result. But if you do want to label them, you can do so like this, x1, y1, x2, y2. And now we'll... So 0 in negative 3 squared and you see it doesn't matter about negatives because we are squaring them your negatives going to become positive anyway all right so this is going to be 9 squared uh, sorry 3 squared 9 negative 3 squared which is 9 and this is going to be negative 4 squared which is 16 so that gives us 25 now remember that's a b squared To get a b, I'll just say therefore, a b equals the square root of 25, and you'll see this one's come out nicely. The distance between those two points is five units. I'm just going to put units because when we're talking about distance, of course, it's a measurement. Um, in these ones, it's just always going to be a particular unit, unless of course they uh, state otherwise. So there's one with uh, a nice whole number rational result. Uh, let's have a look at a second. All right, so here's one here. You notice this one does have a negative in it. That doesn't matter. We will be doing the same thing. What I'm going to find first is AB squared. Okay, you can label these if you wish. So x1, y1, x2, y2, of course. Uh, and that way, hopefully you can see where I'm getting these numbers from. So I'm going to go x2 minus x1. That's 4 minus negative 1. Just pop it in a bracket there just so I don't lose that negative. That's all squared. Plus 8 minus 6. And that's going to be all squared. All right, so this is going to be 4 minus negative 1 is 4 plus 1. So that's going to be 5 squared. Uh, and then 8 minus 6 is 2, so 2 squared. So that's going to be 25 plus 4. So AB squared is 29. Of course, that means that, just say there, 4 AB. I've got to take the square root of both sides, so root. 29. From there, if you get a third result like this, you want to make sure you simplify it, but of course this one's not going to simplify any further. Uh, if you do need to approximate it, of course you need a calculator to do that, uh, so you can approximate it, and this one's 5.39, but I'm just going to leave it as is. That's my distance between 
my two points there, so root 29. All right, finally, I'd like to show you one just a little bit more challenging. Once I find it, here it is. Okay, I'm just going to keep doing it. Hopefully I haven't chopped off the top. I probably have, but that's all right. Um, so what I'm going to do here, um, as you can see, um, I have it's x1, y1, x2, y2. You'll see I've got two points A and B. Now, I've been actually given A. I've got the, the A coordinates. I've got B, but I actually don't have the x value there. I've got W. Um, and 4 for the y value, but I don't have the rest. Um, by the way, this is, I might just move this down a little bit. This one is from your textbook. It is from exercise 4a and it's 5c in that particular exercise. Um, so I've got a, I don't have all of the b coordinate. Um, and what I'm told is the distance between them. So I know that the distance between them is 10. So to start this one off, what I would do is I would write my formula for AB, which is the square root of x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1, as you can see. And they are, they're both squared. Um, then what I would do is I would substitute the value for AB, which is 10, into that rule. What I've done here is I've just um, evaluated. So I've done 4 plus 2 is 6, so this would be 6 squared. From here, what I'm actually needing to find is W. I need to know what this X coordinate, X value is for the B coordinate. So what I've got is a, an equation now that I need to solve. So I'll do a couple of things here. What I'll do for this next line is you'll see I've got 10 equals the square root of this. So what I want to do is square both sides. So 10 squared is 100. So that's going to be equal to what I've got left under the square root sign there. And I'll just, instead of writing 6 squared, I'll write 36. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides. That leaves me with 64 on that side, 100 minus the 36. And on this side, it leaves me with just oops, W minus 3, all squared. Now, of course, I've got this side is all squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So that I'm left on this side with just W minus 3. Now, the thing I want to um, just state when I'm doing this question is, you notice just then I took the square root of both sides. Now, when you take the square root of a number, it's really important that you recognize that you can actually get two answers. So the square root of 64 has two possible answers. The first one is nice and obvious. So 8, 8 to 64. So square root of 64 is 8. But you also need to recall that any number that is negative and squared will give you a positive result. So what this means is that the square root of 64 is actually equal to plus or minus or positive or negative 8. So positive or negative 8 is equal to w minus 3. Now from there I'm going to get two answers. I'm going to split this into two. If that's okay, I'll just move this out the way to keep this fairly neat. Is I'm going to split this in two. So my final uh, part of my final workings, just over here, uh, I'll start with a positive eight. Eight equals w minus three. Therefore, w is eleven. Or Negative 8 is w minus 3, therefore negative 8 plus 3, so negative 5. So we actually have two answers here. That particular coordinate is either negative 5 or it's 11. Now the reason that we can get two answers with these is we've been given the distance, which is 10, and there's actually two possible coordinates that will give us the distance of 10 from that point A, three, the 3, negative 2. I'll show you a drawing of that. So 
what I've done here is I have plotted the 3, negative 2. Uh, so that's my point A. And I've plotted the two possible coordinates that we found. Remember we had W is negative 5 and W was 11. So the reason that we've got 2 is that this distance 10, so from here to here, is actually exactly the same. It's equidistant to this point over here. So I'll, I can indicate that by putting the lines on it like so. And if we have a look at here, we could draw a little dot all the way up. We've actually got a couple of congruent triangles here. Let me get to the line again. Okay, so if you have a look at this point A, I could go 10 units that way to get to B. Alternatively, I could go 10 units that way to get to my other possible, possible coordinate for B. And as you can see, the reason is, um, if you have a look at this, uh, so the distance between A and B in terms of the X values, so difference between 11 and 3 is 8. So 8 between this point here and the end point B. And if you have a look over here, it will be the same distance between 3 and negative 5 is also 8. So you've got congruent triangles here. You've got an 8, you've got a value of 10, and you, they're obviously sharing this, value, uh, this distance here. So obviously these two are exactly the same. So that's um, a more challenging question. Um, so any, any of the questions where you need to find, uh, say, one of the X or Y values within a coordinate, they're always going to be a little bit harder than just a standard um, distance between two points um, use of the formula. So I'll stop there. Uh, you've, you do have some that you can practice with, and there are some uh, in question five. Uh, you might like to try A. Um, and also B as well, um, as they are sort of along, along, along the same lines as the one that I've just done now.